Okay, so this video is just to show you how to assemble the 3D printed tilting tail assembly. And uh, you can pick this up on the store. Um, it's, it's sold as an upgrade or um, it'll be included as a standard part of all the tricopter kits from now on. And then what you're gonna need to assemble it is your carbon and then the, um, the linkages, your bolts, and then the servo and the motor. You're gonna need all the same tools as before. The only thing that's different is you're gonna need something to tamp in the carbon rod, so a little hammer or something. And uh, if you haven't seen the build video, go watch that now. And then when you get to the part where we assemble the tail, just skip that and go straight to this video. So let's get started. Um, the first step is to assemble this carbon section so that we can put it into the motor mount. So let's move everything else aside. You're gonna take the three quarters of an inch. That's the medium sized one and you're going to add a tiny bit of CA to the end. Just a little drop, like that. And then kind of swirl this around and get it to the end right there. Now while it's drying, we can put in the carbon rod into this main section. And the way that we're gonna do that is by putting this piece which cannot get any car or uh, CA on the inside because it's gonna be moving on the inside and putting a tiny little dab on the edge, which will then be brought in when we tap it in. Take a little paper towel and wipe off the excess. Make sure it doesn't get on the inside. Okay, so once everything is dry, I'm just gonna clean up the end with a little bit of medium grit sandpaper. So this is a little bit flatter. And then I'm gonna flush up these pieces to the plastic. Okay, so now that this is flushed up and I've cleaned it off a little bit, we're gonna attach this piece, which is now dry, into here, like that. So let's add a tiny bit of glue on the outside. You can put just a little dab in here. You don't need that much. It's plenty. Twist it around while it goes in. Make sure it's flush right there. Okay, now we're going to assemble these pieces. So add a washer, one of the four millimeter washers from inside the uh, washer bag. You're going to attach this to the open side. So it slides in like that, and then put another washer. Now this last retaining piece of carbon is gonna go slide over here, and then I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of glue on the inside of this. Again, you don't wanna get this to stick together. So I'm spinning it to wick it up, and then I'm gonna press it so that it's Firm, so it's not sliding, but it's not too tight that it's not spinning anymore. And you see that there's no wiggle, but it can still spin. I'm just gonna play with it while the glue sets. There we go. This is put in now, and uh, I'm gonna sand down this little nub. Okay, so now that all of this is assembled, we can start mounting the electronics. I'm gonna put the motor on first. So this simply just goes into the hole, and then you take your, line up all the holes, and you take your six millimeter bolts with washers, and just tighten them down. Now that I've gotten the motor attached, which is pretty easy with the bolts, we're going to attach the servo. And so I've removed this from another, um, a tail assembly, I'm upgrading an old wooden one to the new 3D printed one, so that's why it kind of looks with, like it has a hot glue on it. But anyway, this is just gonna slide in right here. And uh, I made a mistake. We're gonna route the wires through it first. So they come out at the bottom. And now it slides through. We're just gonna add a little bit of glue on the top and on the sides, uh, hot glue to hold it in, and then we can heat that up later and take out the servo. And you wanna make sure that the servo is, um, the, the arm is the farthest away that it can so that uh, you have the most distance with your servo linkages. 
So I've already prepared the servo arm and the um, easy connectors. If you want to know more about how to do this, go watch the original build video. And then I've also taken the linkages and I've already put Z bends in them. So um, if you want to know how to do that as well, go watch the video. But anyway, we're going to link these in. So slide it in like that and over. And then we're going to slide one of the ends into here. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. Now I've temporarily put these down with an Allen key, but later on in the build when we go to program it, you're gonna to wanna to loosen these up and move it around depending on which way this tail is moving, uh, depending on how the gyros uh, react to the tricopter. But anyway, it's linked up for now, basically. And now all we have to do is attach it to an arm, or in my case, attach it to a finished tricopter like this one. And so I'm just gonna add a little bit of hot glue and then slide this whole tail assembly over until it's flush. And then that's it. So let me do that right now. I'm gonna put a tiny bit on the inside here since it is a really good snug fit already. Making sure the um, arm is flush to the end so that there's no hot glue coming out. So that's it. That's the finished tail assembly. You can see it's a lot easier than doing it with the wooden parts. But anyway, if this was an unfinished tricopter, you just have the arm and you connect everything later on when you install the electronics. But for right now, that's it. And then uh, that's it. Once all the glue has dried, congratulations, you finished the hardest part of this build. Now you're gonna grab your other two arms, your motor mounts, and your tools that were included in the kit. So uh, we can set these apart really quickly and I can explain what the tools are. Anyway, what they do is they